It is the first of Seattle's three dress rehearsals Saturday in Pittsburgh. Hello 12s, I'm Jen Mueller with a look at the Seahawks preseason game against the Steelers. It's the first chance for us to go live now, you know, and, and uh, we understand that we go through camping and practice here, you know, we get great tempo and speed and all that, but it, it, it's not the same thing uh, when you finally crank it up and go. And we got to make that next step and, and, and introduce our guys, you know, to full speed football and the young guys to getting on the NFL field and, and realizing that it's just football and, and there's a lot of stuff that, we'll, that we have to accomplish. We have nothing to do with how we play and all that. It's just kind of getting through the process and all. Traveling is really important and teach them how to travel. This what, uh, East Coast, West Coast, East Coast trip has been uh, something that we've really taken a lot of consideration in and how we do it and, and we've been successful at it. For the first time since 2012, fans will watch a quarterback battle play out in the preseason. That is one of the biggest storylines going into the game. As expected, the exact game plan for how they'll be used is under wraps for now. They know, they know what's going on, um, and uh, you know, you guys will see. But we, we got, uh, you know, a plan. It, it will roll with the game a little bit. Pittsburgh has its own QB competition between Mitchell Trubisky, Mason Rudolph, and first-round pick Kenny Pickett, which translates to competitive game action for rookie corners Kobe Bryant and Tariq Woolen. Both have drawn praise for their efforts the first couple weeks of camp. I'm, I'm excited to see those two guys go. They're going to get a lot of play time. Um, they've done a lot of cool stuff, and, and uh, you know, Kobe's really been a gamer. You know, he's proven that over the years. Um, this is a big step for, uh, for Tariq. They're expected to get extended playing time Saturday due to a number of injuries at the position. The defensive front won't have to worry about stopping Najee Harris. The second year back, who rushed for 1,200 yards last year, injured his foot last week in practice. But there's still plenty coach wants to see with the new front. I want to see the communication sharp so the guys know, you know what we've done on the field, it, it goes to the game. Now that's, that's the, do we make the transition is really what we're looking for. And so that's calls, adjustments, um, the, the alerts, all that kind of stuff. I'd like to see if we, we can get, if we've made good progress and we can carry it to the game. That's what we'll evaluate. The Hawks defense is coming off a season in which they allow just 3.79 yards per carry, second best in the league. They are looking to pick up where they left off. And the same is true for the Hawks run game that gets bolstered by the addition of Ken Walker III. I'm surprised he's so well-rounded um, runner. Uh, He's blocking, I, I, again, I think I mentioned it the other day, but his, his pass protection stuff, he just he just turned the page. I mean, he was, he was not very good in college um, as a pass protector, and we didn't know, you know, but Chad's done a great job with him, and uh, Amanda, they've worked really hard with him to get him, to, so it's important, but for this kid, this kid, everything's important. He wants to be great, and uh, he's not going to let any stone be unturned, and, and uh, so... I'm really excited to see how he goes. He's going to get some good play time in this game and get him comfortable with, you know, with the speed of the game and all that. And uh, I expect him to do well. Especially if the offensive line can continue to make progress and the rookie tackles take another step in their development. They're going to play a lot in this game and get a, get a lot of air time. And, and uh, they've they've really been battling. Um, it's I, you know I don't know how they'll take to the game uh, other than I would predict that they're going to do just fine. You know because of what they've done. We've we've thrown everything at them that we can to try to you know um, accelerate the process. You know speed rushers, big rushers, combination stuff, um, all, all kinds of stuff. Outside of the obvious position battles, it is worth keeping an eye on special teams. It is unlikely that stalwarts like Nick Ballore, Travis Homer, and DJ Dallas will see much, if any, playing time because those are the opportunities that young guys can use to earn a spot on the team.